We are doing a foundational teaching. What I, we believe is for the church. For the church in this season, New Testament church and the end time church. And I plead with you to go through the teachings that has all to do with hear and obey. All to do with understand the good works that God has prepared for you for the season, but also understand how to repent from the dead works as the first foundation for the New Testament church to have a life with Christ. Now we talked about this, and I know you all know all of this and get into the a Father's Home channel on YouTube. If you didn't receive the teachings, or you were not here, but remember we said accept your assignment. First of all, God has an assignment for you, otherwise you would be in heaven today. But there's an assignment here on earth for you, that's why you are here. And if you are here without understanding assignment, what on earth are you doing on earth? Hello. Accept your assignment with the good works God has prepared for you long before the end, before the beginning of your life. Hello. Accept your assignment, but for that, there's nothing if you don't believe your blueprints. If you don't believe the word, the word, everything will fail, everything will be shaken, but only one thing will stand as the word of God. So in the assignment that you have, if something in your life must stand for eternity, it will be based on the word. You know the word, meditate the word, get into the word. If you don't only, only know three scriptures, I know Satan knows uh, all the scripture, but I'm talking about with faith. Believe, believe your blueprint. But believe in the context of relationship. Amen. But come into the word. Come to know the word. If you don't know the blueprint, what a waste of a life. Accept your assignment. Believe your blueprint. Commit to communicate. We say progressive communication like the woman at the well. She didn't understand, but she kept on communicating. It's not, I communicate with my agenda and I give put everything before God in prayer. This is what I would want. This is what I would want. And I'm waiting for God to perform to my prayer. I'm waiting for an answer for yes and no or no, but God will come with his agenda. Commit to communicate as part of a relationship, a quality of your relationship with God. Not to understand everything, but in the context of communication between you and your Lord. Deep calling unto deep. Amen. Commit to communicate. Die against destruction. Nothing will work if it's not through the cross. Only through the cross you can be reconciled. Only through the cross you can have impact. Only through the cross, but with an attitude of, I cannot boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Deny yourself and follow him. Yes, deny yourself, take up your cross, but deny not destroy yourself. Religion will destroy yourself. Performance will destroy yourself. Your flesh, circumstances, whoever, they will destroy you if you don't deny. If you deny yourself, you are protected against Destroy yourself. Destruction will be your life if you don't choose denying yourself. You are protected through the word of the cross. If you don't allow the word of the cross to protect you, you will be destroyed. But one of the two, you will be denying or you will be destroyed. Hell has the right to destroy you. If you don't deny yourself, take up your cross in Christ and follow him. Because denying yourself is through the cross that it will be him living through you. And if it's him through living through you, you are protected through Jesus Christ. Amen. May God help you. May God help you. That's D. E was. If I understand in all of this, Holy Spirit can come. Father's hand can be upon you. Holy Spirit, when he comes upon you, you will be my witnesses. Ener energize to evangelize. Everybody say energize to evangelize. Okay, so you can go with the gospel, but if you, are, if you understand these principles, when you are full of the Spirit, you have this urge to talk about Christ. You have this urge not to condemn others, but this urge that something of Christ must come out. Trust God to be filled by the Spirit in such a way. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you still here? E, F. So, when I took my assignment, I take the word and I... Stay in communication. I've worked through the cross. I have the Holy Spirit working in me and through me and over me. What will you be able to do? You can focus beyond the facts. You're not the product of the facts. You're not the product of your success. Not the product of your title. Not the product of your, your mis, miscommunication. You're not the product of your failure. You're not the product of all of that. You're a product of the heart of the Father. But only if you can see beyond the facts. Fact, you must go and burn in hell. Truth, God took everything. 
God took the mess up and all the blame and all the all that what was the impact of your sin he took it on the cross hello that's truth beyond the facts hello are you still yet focus beyond the facts so that you can go with grace go with grace grace that you will miss hell no grace God's enablement go with God's enablement so if you can focus beyond the facts into what God has for you, into the truth that will set you free, you can go with the enablement of God. Because Paul said, God's grace towards me was not in vain. What does it mean? He's going to burn in hell. No. It means what he enabled me to do, I worked with that grace. And it was accomplished. It wasn't in vain. So there's specific unique grace for each one of you, each one of us. For a specific calling that he has for our lives. But if we don't work with that grace, with that enablement, that anointing God has given you in a unique way, it was in waste. It was in vain that God enabled you to do and to live according to your unique calling here on earth. Go with the unique enablement God has given you. Go with grace. Then, hear with heart. Remember? You can hear, you sit here, you can hear, you can hear, oh man, the devil hurts every sermon. The devil is also here and he can hear the sermon. You can read the word, you can speak the word and the devil will hear everything. But not with his heart, it's not possible. But heart, heart is like I hear in a relationship. I hear deep calling unto deep, deep calling unto deep, the word says. There's depth in communication, there's depth in what I hear. There's meaning, there's eternal value in what I hear. I hear with my heart. My heart is not in every rubbish. If I don't feel like worship, I will not worship. So if you have a rubbish heart, then believe that. Now take your rubbish heart and just throw it away. Or just let it lay around, you know. But if you believe you have a quality heart and Jesus died and gave you everything because he wants your heart with his heart, his heart with your heart then you don't hear so that you will understand. Hear so that you can understand, and then you will do. No. When you hear his heart, your mind will many, 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 many times not understand. Not understand what he's saying. But when you can hear his heart, then you can move with what God has for you. Amen. That's a life with meaning. That's a life with quality. That's a life that has eternal value. When you hear with your heart. Okay. Let it be so. Then we said, you understand this heart, heart connection. You will invade with insight. Now, is that not the same as focus beyond the facts? No, focus beyond the facts. That we can see the truth. God can set you free. Invade with insight has to do, like we said, wisdom, how to put it on the ground. That man has insight. That woman has insight. She saw the situation. She opened her mouth, she gave the wisdom, and she put it on the ground. That is a lady with insight. Invade your situation, invade your challenge, invade the place. That invasion is like something is coming in with authority. Something is coming in and everything is changing, or everything is shaken. And it's not whatever political coalition will be formed. No, there will be an invasion that is from heaven if the church of Christ has insight. Insight, insight, insight in the situation. Are you with me? But if the church is walking blind, if the church is not having the insight because they don't build the accurate principles in their lives, the world must go with whatever they feel. And the church is there just to comment. No, not like that anymore in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. But may every Christian that will be in Parliament have insight and open his mouth at the right time. And the anointing of God will come down and the presence of God will be there. And people will just be shocked at the insight of that man when he rises. And he speaks forth and afterwards he's shocked. You realize, I didn't even know I was going to say that. May there be people that are led so by the Spirit. Having their guts to do that. Amen. Invade with insight your situation tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Please, please. 
then we are here today and we say journey with Jesus join with Jesus or journey with Jesus if you can write that down join with Jesus journey with Jesus now this is not just I'm with him he's with me now oh, that's that's one thing but this journey has to do with more or with just I'm following him you know I can follow him but somewhere I need to walk with him I need to walk with him this journey is more than just obeying him there's a depth there's a richness there's a description that you can give about your journey with him let's talk first one 1 Corinthians 3 9 we're talking about the good works God has prepared for us for we are fellow workmen joint promoters laborers together with and for God you are God's garden and when you the field under cultivation you are God's building what are we talking fellow workmen joint promoters laborers together with God you will promote something that's an amazing word there in the amplified joint promoters what God will promote in government you will promote that if God promotes abortion you will promote abortion if he doesn't promote abortion you will not promote abortion if you're a worker with God if you're not if you're not doing that go and work some other demon but you're not working with God you will promote what God is promoting so tomorrow in your workplace tomorrow in your situation what you will promote is not your idea not your agenda not your circumstance not your success you make sure that you promote what God will promote amen and that is even give priority to like a promotion of somebody is somebody that says that person is important we need to give him more authority we need him go more to give him more impact he will bring a success to us all what are you saying I promote the Word of God this will bring the success this must have a higher position this one must this must have more say in the company in my finances in my relationships in my circumstance in my future in my dreams the Word of God must have more say I will be a joint promoter what God promote I will promote because I'm a fellow worker a fellow worker co-worker with Christ if you don't work with Christ you're gonna work with somebody if you like it or not you don't work with love you will work with fear the opposite of love is fear perfect love drives out all fear so you choose not to work with love you will automatically choose to work with fear you choose not to work with the joy of the Lord as your strength you choose to walk and to work with miserableness with with depression with negativity you will work with that finish you choose not to work with a with a, a peace of God you will work with the anxiety who wants to choose I want to work with anxiety I want to work with stress who experienced that yes a lot of us it's not like we choose that but we choose not to work with God that is called peace God that is called the joy God that is called love and then the rest is history hell can do whatever he wants to no your journey with Jesus may it have value next one we must work the works of him who sent me and be busy with his business while it is daylight night is coming on when no man can work there will be an end where everything is finished but now when you have the light now when you have the grace well, let's say I will work the works of the one who sent me Jesus said the father sent me and so as the father has sent me so I sent you we must work the works of him so God the father is working and whatever work you do you must it must be work that you can see the father will do that also tomorrow in your work if you the way that you work the what you're gonna work how you're gonna do it how faithful you're gonna be how with excellence you're gonna give it do it how what are what are you gonna do it if you see God is doing it in that way do it in that way 
But you need to work the works of him who sent Christ and through Christ has sent you. You are sent into that place to work. Whatever work you do, it's because you are sent by God, not because you got an odd job opportunity, but you're supposed to believe that you are sent by God into that place. So tomorrow, if you're frustrated with your work, go and confess it. Say, God, are you giving me this frustration because I'm not in your will? Or is it the thing of the enemy to take me down? Show me. But I want to work the works of you. That what you are working, fellow, 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 fellow workmen, working with God. Amen. Let's say, busy with Father's business. You are busy with the business of your father. You better be busy. Oh, I'm very busy. Okay, great. So you and father are busy with what? That's how we can speak to one another. I'm very busy. Oh, so you and father God, you are very busy doing what? You are busy with the business of father. You are working the works of your father. You are busy with the business of your father. Say that a hundred times to yourself this week. Let it become a revelation. Let it become part of your system. I'm busy with the business of my father. I work the works of my father. And let it become a foundation, a foundation, foundation. To get your mind in the right direction. Amen. That's what we talk about. Journey with Jesus. This journey with Jesus, this walking with God. Adam, Eve, perfect. Eden, perfect. In this perfect world with perfect people, God comes to do what? To journey with him. He comes to walk with him. I was looking for Adam to do what? To walk with him. To walk with him. And he's not just going for a stroll. He's not just... It's a certain type of lifestyle. It's a certain type of life that the father dreamt about. And that is not just getting out you out of trouble. That's something that has to do with a major, major eternal quality. Amen. Next one. There we go. John 12, 26. Write down, please. If anyone serves me, he must continue to follow me, to cleave steadfastly to me, confirm, conform wholly, wholly <laughs> to my example in living and if need be in dying. And wherever I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Honor him. The people will recognize that you are serving him. When you follow him, where he is, you will be. What are we talking about? It's not just following him like this. But suddenly, you are walking with him. Next to him. Because you understand where we are going. Me and God, there's a, there's a walking together. There's a recognizing. There's a recognizing that where you walk is that's where God is walking. People look at your life and they see where you go, that's where God would want to go. Because you follow him. And God promised the man who follows him and serves him where God is, there you will be. You will be a fellow worker. You will join you are joined with Jesus. You are in, on a journey with him. You will journey with me if you follow me and serve me, God says. But there's no journey with Christ in your life. If you don't follow him, that means following means he's the focus of your life. Follow. You cannot follow if you don't focus. Let's say, I cannot follow if I don't focus. But when you focus on him, you can follow because then you know where to go. If you don't know where he is, how on earth can you follow him? So you follow him into your financial situation, into your relationships, in your, into your business, into your studies, into your dreams, into your future, into next week. Hello? You follow him into what you will say to people about the politics, about coalition, coalition or what? Coalition or coalition or whatever it's going to be. Make sure you know where God is. Amen. People think that the way the political parties, how they will put it, everything together, that will determine the future. Where is the Church of Christ that will say that God will determine the future? If the Church will facilitate on earth 
how South Africa is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. There's a heaven that God dreamt about of South Africa. And the heavenly South Africa can become a reality on earth if there's a grown up church of Christ that's not busy with their own stuff that can pray on earth the South Africa as the South Africa is in heaven. May God help us to grow up in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Next one. And he said to them, come after me as disciples, letting me be your guide. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will make you. We're going to another scripture also now, but what is God saying? When you follow me, I will make you. My hand will be on you. My hand will be in you. If you don't follow him, but for that you must know where he is, where he is, so that you can follow him in that area. Not because you understand, but just because by faith you see him. So when you follow him, he will touch you in a deep way. He will make you. Everybody say, make me. He will make you a vessel. He will make you the person you're supposed to be. He will make you the vessel that can walk with him, can have an eternal quality life with value. He will make you. But what does he say then? When I make you, you will make others. When I make you, you become, I will make you fishes of men. And when I make you, you'll have a heart for other people. Not first for yourself. You'll have a heart for other people. Because he says, I will make you. And then Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 20, 28, 19. That is 4, 19. You'll remember it. Matthew 4, 19 and 28, 19. 419, I will make you, and 2819, therefore go, and you make. I make you, and then you go and make disciples of all the nations. And then, what did he say? When you make disciples, when you baptize them to identify with me, when you teach them to obey me, see, everybody say see. God says, open your eyes. See, I will be with you till the end of the age. So if you don't disciple, if you don't baptize them, if you don't teach them, God will not be with you. No, that's not what he said. He will never leave you, never forsake you. He will be in your life. He will be like the shadow. He will be there. But to walk, to join him, is something else. To see him in this special way, how he will be there working with you, working with you, you with him, he with you. That joining, that journey. God says, I challenge you, just, just, just open your eyes. Just open your eyes, you will see. When you go and make disciples, when you let them identify with me, when you teach them to obey, just open your eyes, you will see me there. I will be working with you. Because, you, guys, you cannot do it on your own. I cannot do it on my own. Open your eyes and you will see me in a very unique, special way. Working with you. Join with Jesus. Do your journey with Jesus. Amen. Next one. Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage. And let your heart be stout. Oh, and the word and strong. And enduring. Yes, wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage. <sighs> the thing what you need to be brave for many times is not brave to do certain things. Sometimes it's having the guts and to be brave enough to wait. To wait. When Saul feared, he just brought the offering himself. And the prophet came and he said, because you did it inaccurately, because you couldn't wait, your destiny is gone. And your children and your grandchildren, their destiny is gone. Oh, man. 
But this wait is not waiting, waiting for the answer. And I am, because I can walk with my success. I can walk with my failure. You can walk with your offense towards that person in a petty immaturity. You can walk with your hurt. And it's not just you had the hurt in front of you. You had this hurt and it really it was, it was traumatic. Whatever you went through, you, you just saw that. And then you bring it alongside and you take the hand of your hurt. Or take the hand of your success. The hand of your failure. And you're walking with that. You walk with that. Let's see where that thing will take you. And now when you walk with that, you wait for God to change this. To change this. You look at your circumstances and you wait for God to change the circumstance. You don't wait for God to change the circumstance. You wait for God. So for God in your circumstance. Because God wants to most probably use you in the circumstance. He's not going to change the circumstance. He's waiting for you to see him in the circumstance. So if you can wait on God. And then walk with him. Journey with him, join with him into your success, into your failure, into your hurt, into your challenges, into your situation, into your opportunities. Then wait for him. Come on, guys. Let's go for a journey with God. Amen. Are you still, still here? Wait and hope. You need hope when you wait. It's not just waiting. It's not, I gave it over to God, but actually you dumped it. You don't stand responsible before God anymore. No, in waiting there's faith, in that waiting there's hope. Because you expect God. You first don't first expect Him to change things. You expect Him on the scene. Be brave and of good courage. You with me? Next one. You write it down. No man shall be able to stand before you. All the days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Nobody will be able to stand before you. You need to be strong, courageous. As I was with Moses. My brother, my sister, what an awesome, awesome, awesome encouragement and testimony it would be. If God could come to your children and say, as I was with your father, as I was with your mother, so I will be with you. And then your child feel encouraged. Because they saw how mom, dad, and dad walked with God. They saw how mom walked with God. And they saw the beauty of that relationship. And God comes and saying, so as you saw me walking with your mother, so I will walk with you. Wow. And in that, the child feels encouraged. The child is strengthened. The child feels, now I can be strong. What about such a type of testimony? You guys not married yet? Yes. Pray it. Pray it. Pray it already for your future. You guys married? Repent. 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 <laughs> May God help us all. Okay. Okay, hallelujah. Come on, man. What a, what, a, what a way. What a way to put it. Huh? If I can be having God with me as he was with my father or with my mother, I'm encouraged I will be strong to do what God has called me to do. That is legacy. That is, that is what you give you. The, the first inheritance is not five billion rand. The, the first inheritance is that. Something like that. That type of life. That is legacy. As I was with him, so I will be with you. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. Next one. Yet now, be strong. That's a command. Alert. Courageous. Jerry Babel says the Lord, be strong. Alert. Courageous. Joshua, son of Jehozadak. The high priest, and be strong, alert, courageous. All you people of the land, says the Lord, so that you are strong and courageous. No. So that you can work. And work. For, I'm, for I am with you, says the Lord. Why can you do what you must do? Because God is with you. You can, you can journey with him. But this journey is conditional. 
if you don't take strength from him, strong, alert, courageous, alert, is be careful not to fall in, other, in, in, in a lot of rubbish. Be careful not to be deceived. Alert is you are watching where God is. You are strong, you are focused, you have the courage to work. And why are you strong? Why are you courageous? Why are you alert? Because God is with you. Why? God is with you for what? Strong and courageous for what? God is with you for what? To work. Everybody say to work. So make sure in your work you will see the quality of how you actually believe if God is with you or not. When you're going through negativity and you feel discouraged, and if you I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, okay, bring it before God, but that discouragement, be honest, but it's a sin. I don't have the strength to do this, I don't have the strength to do that, that's okay. Don't take condemnation, but that's a sin. Because you're commanded by God to be strong, alert, and courageous. So if you don't do the command of God, you are disobedient. Are you with me? So it's okay to put it out there because you must be honest, guys. We must be bring it in the light, hey, without condemnation. But just then ask God, okay, God, how must I change this? First of all, I must know, I must know you are with me. And you're going to be with me when I do the works that you have called me to do. When I do the works of Work the works of my father when I do that. When I'm busy with the business of my father. Then I will not be tired. I'm tired in doing your business, Lord. Oh, okay, if you've done it alone. But if you've done it with God, you'll be strengthened. You'll be strengthened. You'll just, you will walk around with testimony. I'm not saying cloud nine all the time, super spiritual. No, 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 no. We are on our way. We are on our way. But walk with honesty. And when you're tired, just see what you could have done others otherwise so that you don't fall in that tiredness, discouragement, and all that stuff. Pray with somebody. Get out of it to, into a lifestyle where there's a joy that's beyond yourself. It's the joy of the Lord. Amen. Next one. Go then and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And verse 20, and see I'm with you till the end of the age. And see I'm with you till the end of the age. Are you still here? Are you still here, my brother, my sister? So what are we talking about? You are doing life with him, with him. But like I said, if you're not going to join with Jesus, depression will join with you, or negativity, or temptation will join with you. I know. Some other spirit going to join you on a journey. There will be a journey with some other spirit. Some other demon will join you. You will be on a journey with some other demons if you don't go for the journey with Christ. But there will not be just the emptiness next to you. You don't take the hand of Christ in your journey. Somebody will take your hand. And they will have the authority to take your hand. Because why? You gave them the authority. You gave those demons to take your hand. Why? Because you didn't take the hand of Christ. You're not going to hell. Holy Spirit is in you. But for your journey on earth, you walk with demons. Fellowship with demons, the word says, to the Christians. Don't have fellowship with demons. Don't have a journey with your hurt, your bitterness, your negativity, your depression, your this, your temptation. Your journey with your success. Your journey with your success. You know what God had to do every time Israel, when God blessed them, and he blessed them. But instead of, they called out to God, God, and they took his hand, he took their hand, and he took them out of the rubbish into a place where he blessed them. And the goodness and mercy followed them, and the blessing came. And will overcome you, the word says. And the blessing came. And they took their hand out of his hand. And took the hand of the blessing. Take the hand of the success. And they walked with the success. And then God had to do what? 
because God is nasty, he put them, throw them in exile. He, he, he changed the circumstances that they have bad, bad, bad circumstances so that they must cry out to the Lord. No, God didn't want to be nasty. You are walking with that thing and God wants to show you that thing that you are walking with is going to destroy you. That thing is not me. That thing is not from me. And God exposes that thing that this riches, this success, it's not me. It cannot be your God. You're supposed to walk with God. And then this thing is exposed and you realize what the heck happened now here? And in that place of exile, in that place of circumstances that are shaken, Suddenly, I leave this, this thing and I call out to God. God, I need you. Take my hand, please. And in the end time, when heaven and earth will be shaken, it will be the, 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 the moment for the church to cry out to God, to reach out to heaven like never before. And in the reaching out, God's hand will reach out. The open heaven will be there. And you will see the biggest miracles on earth ever. And what God's going to do. Make sure, are you joining your success, joining your misery, joining your opinion, joining your personality, or are you joining on this journey with Christ? Come to know Him, please. Okay, so, then we have seven vision statements in this church. Those who are walking with us, uh, make sure, if you're not a member, Either become a member or be a member of the other church and walk with them. But you're supposed to be a member. Somewhere. As you journey with people, journey also then in that way with Christ. Amen? If you don't love your brother and you say you love God, you're a liar. You hate God. If you hate your brother, then you don't love God. Okay, so that, that, that healthy religion... Is a foundation for you. Let's go. So what, do you, what are we saying every time? When you have this journey with Christ, the vision statement says, as a co-worker, you can go and read there, and get these ones. If you don't have it, you cannot sell it, but go and get these, and put it in your Bible somewhere. When you journey, you as co-workers, as co-workers with Christ, disciple with the good shepherd people when you disciple people it must be with the good shepherd with the good shepherd so if you don't know the good shepherd don't go and tell other people how they must live there's only a joining with jesus when you go to people and give them a pattern of life this discipline remember is because of your potential discipline you have a certain discipline, that means you have a certain pattern, certain lifestyle. Bring them in the lifestyle, in the style of life that is from me. Bring them in that quality kingdom lifestyle. But you cannot do it if you don't join Jesus Christ. So in my journey with him, now I say, I'm joining him and I'm asking God, come and provide for me this and provide for me that and provide for me. But God is manifesting him at that moment as the good shepherd in your life. He's not going to provide for you that thing now because you need to see who is the God that's with you now. Not a different God. But to Moses he says, I am who I am. I'm the God of Abram, Isaac and Jacob. You go and hide behind the name of Abram, Abram Isaac and Jacob. To the other person he says, I'm God Almighty. To the other one he says, I'm your father. To the other one he says, why? But he's all of that. But he wants to manifest himself in a certain way because he wants to operate, he wants to give, he wants to do a work according to him as good shepherd. And the good shepherd will bring discipline. He will ask you to follow. He will make you lay down. He will anoint your head with oil so that there's no chochas for the sheep on the head. He will do a lot of, he will lead you through. He will not protect you against the valley of the shadow of death. He will going to take you through. He's going to take you in it, but he's going to take you through it. But that's good shepherd. So at that moment, when you speak in prayer, when you're in conversation with God, when you join, you are joining the good shepherd, then respond. 
to what he's saying to you. But you also, and that is God's presence. Good shepherd is Jesus saying, Father is always with you. So God is always with me. Second one, as a co-worker, with who? Christ as the good, as the bread of life. Hey? As the bread of life. What is God's? You're walking with God's provision. Hand in hand, you are walking with God's provision. Malo, remember that. You're walking with God's provision. And in that sense, when you ask Him to provide, you know He will provide. You know when you stand in front of the... What? Where must you pay your water and lights again? What's it good? St. Municipality. You stand at the municipality, municipality and you stand there and you ask for bread and you ask for bread and nobody's giving you bread and you're throwing a tantrum in your toy toy later and you don't know what and you're crying and you're fasting and nobody hearing your heart because and you're asking for bread. What the freak are you doing? Take your, you to yourself to the psychiatric ward. What are you standing there for asking for bread? Just go around the corner to the shop. Pay not a million rand, just keep something, and you have a bread. Just as easy as that. But now why with God, when I'm talking about provision, join him as the bread of life. And see who he is as the bread of life. But in your journey with God, sometimes he's now busy with you, and he's putting some discipline on you. And you must know, it's the good shepherd speaking into my life. Sometimes it's the bread of life. He manifests himself as the bread of life. Sometimes he manifests himself as the way, the truth, and the life. The third one is when I am trained, when you are trained. And you are in that situation and you just pray that God will change the circumstance and that God will provide and give you something else. But he's not going to provide for you now because he's standing there as the way, the truth, and the life. What? He's standing there as your breakthrough. He's standing there as your strategy. He's standing there as the truth beyond the facts. And he wants to operate as the way, the truth, and the life. But you don't see him. You didn't wait for him. You're just waiting for him to come and change your circumstance. But wait for him and see how he reveals himself in the fire. And then you speak to him in the way that he reveals himself in your fire. Oh, you're still here. And when you see he's revealing himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Like he said to many Palestinian Muslims in this time, in the dreams. Oh, man. Then you ask him, God, what is, what is the way? If you're the way, the truth, and the life, what is the way? What is the strategy? Where, uh, how is the breakthrough? You are, if you are the strategy, you are the way, you are the breakthrough. Show me. And that through that truth, I will be set free to have the life, the way, the truth, and the life. Be a co-worker with who? With a resurrection and life. Be a co-worker with, you're not uh, working for survival. You don't try to survive tomorrow. You have a life. You have a life. If Holy Spirit who raised Christ from the dead is living in you, how much more will he not quicken your mortal bodies to live for him? Romans 8. So may God help you. May God help you. Number 5. Just quickly. We are going through this. Number 5 is plant. Plant what? As co-workers. Everybody say co-workers. Because you journey with him. When you journey with him, you work with him. As, as you journey with the true vine. It sounds freaky. But he's the true vine. As you journey with the true vine. What are we talking? The branch is in the vine. He talks about utter, utter, utter dependency. At that stage, it's just like you need to be dependent. God, can I change your circumstance? No. What, what is the true vine saying to you? Be dependent on me because I want you to bear fruit in this situation. I want you to be, have love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, long-suffering, all those stuff. Are you with me? I want you to bear fruit. And Jesus is revealing himself. Not as a warrior that's going to destroy all your, your boss and all the other people. He's the, 
He's revealing himself as the true vine. He says, be dependent on me. You don't do it for them. You do it for me. You focus on me. You are faithful even if they are unfaithful. Even if they are corrupt. Even, even though there's corruption, you do it for me as if I'm the boss. And you do it with my strength, my wisdom. You will be faithful in what I ask of you to do in this place. I'm your boss, not them. And that is the true vine speaking to you. So that you as a branch will have excellent quality fruit. Join with Jesus. Your journey with Jesus. There's another thousand examples I can use. My brother, my sister, in your journey with Christ that is supposed to be not for one hour boring. If you allow him to reveal himself in the way that he wants to surprise you. Is it something like that? When God is uh, figuring out your will. Not figuring out, sorry. Uh, um, he wants to show he wants to show his will to you. So it is now the Father's will that end of next month you will have a 620,000 rand. That is the Father's will. No, that is not what Father and Jesus is talking about. Father and Jesus is talking about, I want you, my son, to reveal us as the provider to my child. And for that... We will do it in this way. Or that man is going through major lot of challenges. But let there be enough that he can see, look back and be thankful and know that in spite of all the troubles, in spite of all the this and the debt and the things that they're going through and all the that they can look back and see, see how the Lord has provided. We never went hungry and that is not not to teach them a lesson but them to have that gold quality in their hearts of thankfulness of gratitude of as I word for contentment you are still here walk journey journey with him it's a journey are you with me? There will be no boring day in heaven. Because for eternity, 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 the next moment of your eternity, you will still be amazed at something new that you will discover of God. Think of eternity and for eternity, you will not be able still to grasp the fullness of the fullness of the fullness of the fullness of the depth of the riches of the awesome, awesomeness of who God is. Oh, come on, man. Let it start tomorrow, please. Let it start tomorrow. So after plant, we're talking about what? What's the next one? Rich. Rich. If we say, if co-workers, as co-workers with Christ, reach, reach the nations with who? With the door of the sheep. Jesus Christ, the door of the sheep. Next to you is walking what? Opportunities. Opportunities. He's the door of the sheep. He's the one that gives you opportunities. So you're walking with opportunities. And his name is called the door of the sheep. So if you walk with Christ, there will always be opportunity. No, but he's not opening this door. I'm telling the door of the sheep, that is my door. I want you to open that door. You can pray, you can put it before the Lord. Put it before the Lord, please, as the word says. But at that moment, there is opportunity. You're going, you are, your life is shaken, and at that moment, there's opportunity for what? Opportunity to praise the Lord, opportunity to be thankful, opportunity to worship Him in spite of, Opportunity to love, opportunity to, to forgive. You won't believe the list of a thousand opportunities that you can make right now that you have. So come to know Jesus as the door of the sheep. And God, in essence, God in him is every heavenly opportunity that the Father has for you. And he's walking with you. And lastly, enjoy as co-workers with Christ, enjoy life with the light of the world. What are you talking about? At the end of the day, the joy of the Lord will be your strength today, yes. But at the end of the day, 
at the end of the day, good and faithful servant, enter the joy that your master enjoys. Your eternal reward is to have the type of satisfaction that God your father has. Having the satisfaction that Jesus Christ has, that's an eternal reward. What satisfies him tomorrow? If you or your heart is also satisfied in that, that is an amazing, amazing, amazing reward in your life. Enjoy the joy that your master enjoys. So if it's enjoying with the light of the world, in the light there's a perfect work that God will do. There's no fight with darkness in the light. Darkness must flee. You put on the light, darkness does not have a fight with light. It just has to flee. But there's only fight if you are having thoughts in darkness. If you have thoughts with that person, you have issues with that person. But it's a darkness place. It's a place of darkness. That's when the fights and you are, can we become more and more tired. But your life can have, according to God's dream, God's dream for you is to have a life of joy. It doesn't say everything will be easy. But we want to connect joy with easiness. When it's easy, then I have joy. <laughs> to the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. He rejoices over you of singing. Zephaniah 317. He rejoices over you of singing. So let it be true. My brother, my sister, I pray for you. That you will really, really come into that place. That you have this journey with God. Journey with God. So that at the end of the joy, end of the, of the day, you will enjoy the joy that is in the one that you journey with. Oh, that rhymes. Enjoy the journey with Jesus as you walk in his joy. Oh, man. You must write it down. Scomphio. Are you with me? Say your neighbor, are you here? Okay. Give me a fake joy smile. <laughs> God help us in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for who you are. Come and do that, what you want to do in our lives, please, Lord. God, we want to journey with you. We want to, our life to be a journey with you.